feels a heck of a lot better to win. Um, we still got a ways to go. I, I keep saying season's, you know, uh, process, and you know, we're still growing. And uh, you know, down the stretch, we just have to be a smarter uh, team. And you know, maybe we haven't been in that situation enough, but uh, you know, you, you can you can close the door on teams in the last couple minutes when you're up double digits, eight ten, and. So uh, we'll get better. Uh, I was happy that we obviously out-rebounded one of the best rebounding teams in the country. That's no easy task. Hold them under double-digit offensive rebounds is, um, shows that our guys were uh, understanding of who Utah uh, was coming in. Um, you know, they, uh, they decimated teams on the glass, and you know, they didn't do that to us. And then even though it felt like we turned the ball over 25 times to only have eight turnovers, uh, is a good thing. So move forward. We're going to play a really good team um, in about a week. Our guys are be off a couple days for exams while they're here at Xavier. Um, so um, in, in the meantime, we'll um, take stock and figure out what we got to get better at. Excuse me for interrupting you. Um, All good. My wife does that a lot. <laughs> how did you, you touched on this a little bit, but how did you like how the team finished down the stretch, particularly uh, from the free throw line. Well, the free throw line was, was really good. I think the last couple minutes we went 10 for 10. Uh, but, you know, it's the, um, <laughs> the, the lady that's balancing teacups and riding a unicycle. I mean, that's, that's how I felt like our team was down the stretch with decisions that we were making. Um, you know, it, when there's 30 seconds, 25 seconds left in the game, like you're winning. So when you have the ball, um, you don't have to play like your hair's on fire. Um, you don't have to start dribbling up the floor. You can just hold it, and they'll come to you, and they'll foul you, and then you go to the free throw line. But, you know, we want to catch it and dribble, uh, not pick it up. Uh, you know, we have an expression that we yell as a team when you're dribbling the ball up the floor, and the guy behind you defensively is about to tip it from behind. We yell wolf, um, and we didn't know that there were any wolves out today down the stretch. You know, basketball can always be related to the real world. You'll be that guy that, you know, when you're 40 years old, like if you don't understand wolves, you're going to walk out going across a crosswalk, and you're going to look this way, and the bus is going to hit you coming the other way. Like, there's 94 feet, so you don't have to concentrate on what's just in front of you. There's people behind you with different uniforms on. They're going to tip the ball. We have to get a lot better. It drove me nuts down the stretch. Chris, in terms of Rashid's play, has the last two games been better matchups for him? Has he raised his level of play, or is it a combination of the two? Well, I think he's raised his level of play because we, you know, we played two Pac-12 teams now, um, both of which really pride themselves on rebounding. I mean, if you're an elite offensive rebounder, you generally get one every five and a half, six minutes that you play. I mean, he got one every two, every three and a half minutes today. I mean, he he was. Incredible on the glass. He's he's a tough kid. Really surprised he didn't play well in the beginning of the year. And um, you know, I'm not going to reward guys that, that don't play better than their teammates in practice. But um, you know, again, it's the chicken and the egg. Do I get more opportunity, coach? No, you got to earn that opportunity. When when you get a couple of them, do your job, and then that sort of multiplies. And he's he's been more of who I thought he'd be the last couple games than he was the first you know, whatever six seven games. In terms of his finishing. Has something clicked there in terms of the shots he's taking? Well, I think he's, I think he's gained a little confidence. Um, you know, we, uh, we're working with those bigs every single day. And Sean's a better finisher than, 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 than he's showing right now, you know. And he, he can't go south on us either. I mean, like, he can't. And Rashid didn't when he, when he wasn't playing as much. So um, I do think that Rashid is, is starting to figure it out a little bit. He can't just – Barrel over guys like you got the charge in the second half and keep talking about it to him. But the best post move that you can make at any level is no no post move needed. Just get deep post position. If you catch a ball into the basket, they're gonna foul, you're gonna score. Knowing how to use your body and seal and just getting better at that. Coach coming off the two losses, how much did you really have to coach the guys in terms of I mean, attacking some of the problems that you had. Were they coming back to practice just ready ready to do that? I mean, is it more on them that they really kind of came together? And no, I think that's a, that, that's a cop out if you just say it's more on, on them. Um, that's my job is to, is to, is to coach them. Uh, I think there's some areas that, you know, you're always trying to improve. You point out whether it's through film work, whether it's through individual drills outside of practice, 
whether it's just sitting down and talking to a player, showing them statistics, showing them what other teams do. I mean, you name it. Um, we just try to find out what can fix the problem. And, um, you know, I thought our team really had two, well, one spirited practice. We got back at 5 in the morning on Thursday. I mean, we couldn't practice. So we watched Utah personnel. We lifted weights. And then Friday's practice was awesome. Guys, you were there. They had a lot of energy. They were talking. And, um, you know, nothing great has ever been achieved without enthusiasm. That's not my quote. So it's Ralph's. Chris, in terms of uh, practice, when you guys do, like, box out drill stuff, you'll get really physical and, and get after it. Do you feel like that's rare for a lot of teams? Do you have a different philosophy on how physical and how how far you're willing to go in terms of practicing boxing out? You know, like he, we've actually scaled it back this year because of our numbers. You know, we started the season with eight healthy bodies on scholarship, and the first day we do a live box out drill, you know, Edmund grabs his hand, you know, starts saying it's dislocated, and so – it's hard because that, that's been a culture here over the last few years of, I mean, really just doing, putting a bubble up and just going at it. And now we're doing more pad work with our walk-ons and making sure that our technique is right, making sure the ball bounces before we pursue it so we can learn how to seal. And we have carryover. And so uh, one thing I, I want to make sure our team is always as good as it can be is, is on the defensive glass. We've got to get better at first shot defense, but if you don't give teams second and third shots, it puts a lot of pressure on, the, on their first one. And um, again, I think we're doing, doing the job there, but it's only been 10 games.